As the word recession dominates the mind of consumers, retailers are fighting against the current to navigate cost cutting. Denim giant Levi Strauss is among them. And despite a hike in prices, the brand wasn't able to escape the rising cost in goods. Our executive editor, Brian Sazi, had a chance to sit down with Chip Berg, Levi Strauss and Co. CEO at this year's Milken Conference, where they discussed everything from the economic slowdown to the growth of its top business. When I joined the company, we were basically a men's denim bottoms business sold in U.S. wholesale. I mean, I, I, that was a big part of our business. And, you know, 12 years ago, after I joined, we put a strategy in place that fundamentally was to protect our profitable core business, which is that men's bottoms business, but to begin to expand the Levi's brand and Levi's portfolio further. Uh, we needed shock absorbers to absorb all of the potential disruption that could be coming. And obviously, one of the big choices was tops. In the apparel industry, the basic rule of thumb is somewhere between four or five tops for every bottom. When I joined the company, we were the exact opposite. Our tops business when I joined was only 10% of our total revenues. Today, it's more than 20%. Uh, it should be more, and we, we are you know, um, still focused on a much bigger number. But I, I jokingly, half jokingly say, we don't even buy tops market share because we don't even scratch the surface. We don't even have a 1% share of tops. Why is globally. that? Is it because I go to the store, I see, Levi's jeans, I, I still don't think about Levi's as doing this other stuff. Right, and our, our ambition, our aspiration, if you will, is for the Levi's brand to be a true head-to-toe lifestyle brand. And for us to do that, we have to be successful in tops. So where we have had success is obviously expanding the tops that make the most sense, like a white T-shirt or a white Batwing T-shirt, which we had tremendous success with. But you know, this is a Levi's top. This is an indigo top woven shirt, and it's it's beautiful. And um, so, a lot of it is just creating the product first and foremost. We got to have the right product, and then buying that product and making sure that it gets to our store. And um, to to pivot the business away from being a bottoms business, you have to buy less bottoms and buy more tops. And every merchant in the world is trained to buy based on what sold last season. So you have to really lean into it. You have to create the right products, lean into it, assort your stores, and uh, you know we're on that path right now. But our tops business has been growing you know, double digit uh, for the last several years, and uh, it still represents a real meaningful opportunity. I went to your website before this interview, Chip, saw a pair of jeans, $325. I thought, wow, is that the impact of inflation? But when I clicked through, there's a real story to these jeans. I believe they're called the Selvage jeans. Tell us about that story, and are consumers open to spending $325 on jeans? In fact, the higher end of our business is probably the best performing part of our business right now. But um, Selvage has this incredible history, and you know, this year we are celebrating the 150th anniversary of the Levi's 501, our most iconic item, and the 501 saw exceptional growth last year. It grew 50% last year. It's our biggest, you know, our most iconic item. And this last quarter, our first quarter, we grew 25%, comping a 50% base. And, uh, you know, it is, it is really on fire. Selvage is, it actually stands for self-edge, which is when, when the fabric is made, it's made on a loom. And if you go way back into the day when we first launched Levi's, to, to have an edge on the end of the fabric so that the fabric wouldn't fray, they created this self edge. And it had a white strip, which later they put a red line down the middle of. And true denim aficionados know what selvage is. And a typical, a real denim head will wear their selvage jeans cuffed so that you can see the selvage. I'm actually not wearing selvage today. I own a lot of selvage. Your secret safe with me. I, 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 I can't see it anyway, but um, I own a lot of selvage because it tends to be much higher quality product. The other thing I'll mention, um, so through the history of Levi's, back right around World War I, we developed a relationship with Cone Mills. 
which today is still one of our important denim suppliers, but back in the kind of World War I days in 19, I think it was 1917 or 16, Cone Mills had a loom in North Carolina, and that white oak loom became really famous to true denim heads. Cone Mills closed that factory about four years ago, and when they closed it, we bought the last remaining supply of cone denim, cone white oak denim. And as we celebrate the 150th, we are launching product with true white oak denim. And it is, it is the last white oak denim you are ever going to be able to buy brand new ever again because that factory is gone. Selling $325 pair of jeans, I mean, it's a phenomenal story. The product is great. The economy is slowing. I, what are you seeing in terms of demand for your jeans right now, given things have slowed down? Yeah, so there, we knew coming into this year that it would, we were going to be navigating a very challenging year, in part because last year was very, very bifurcated. We had a very strong first half as we were coming out of the pandemic. We grew 20 plus percent in the first half. And then in the summer, kind of the bottom fell out as inflation started to impact the consumer, fear of recession started to grab hold, um, currency uh, headwinds. And uh, the second half, we were basically flat, we were flattish. So we have a huge base period in the first half and a soft base period in the second half. And this year, guess what? It's gonna be the opposite. The first half is gonna be really, really challenging. And we should see some real progress with some tailwinds in the second half. But, you know, as I look at the consumer around the world, there is, first of all, the U.S. market is where we are seeing the greatest challenges. Um, in the first quarter, our U.S. wholesale business was very challenged. We have two value brands that we sell in the key mass retailers in this country. Those businesses are both off double digits. The, the lower income, low to moderate income consumer you know, they are now making very tough trade-offs with their monthly budget. And they are literally to the point where they're making decisions about, do I really need another pair of jeans? Or can I trade down from the Levi's value brand to what's a even, private what's label? What's even below the Levi's value brand? A private label brand at, at Walmart or Target. And, um, and, and that, that, those are the trade-offs that we're seeing. The Levi's brand, the Levi's red brand, our core consumer, is in the fifty to one hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollar income level, and that consumer is still buying jeans. In fact, the U.S. denim market in the first quarter grew one percent, comping sixteen percent growth first quarter year ago. So the category is still okay. We're growing share. We're growing share with the core eighteen to thirty year old. We're growing share with women, and uh, you know our business and the brand is still really really healthy, but. Wholesale is very, very challenging for us right now, and especially the lower end of wholesale. That was Levi Strauss & Co. CEO Chip Berg alongside Yahoo Finance Executive Editor Brian Sazi.